this is a series, a story about our stories, and this will come around and make sense. <laughs> we humans are storytellers. Most animals communicate in the present tense. We communicate in the past, the present, the future. We ruminate on things that have already happened. We ruminate on things that have not happened yet, on things that will never happen, on things we hope will happen. And our storytelling has extended this process through culturally mediated forms. So like letters and television and newspapers and magazines and movies and, and social media. <laughs> our storytelling has become mass, mass produced, distributed, and consumed. Millions access the same accounts and circulate opinions of what they have witnessed. Media figures like politicians, actors, comedians, and newscasters tell us what they think we want to know. A lot of problems arise because of this, but I'll leave that dialogue to someone else that would like to take that on. <laughs> then there is person-to-person -person storytelling. These, this level of storytelling is almost never accurate and it's usually disconnected or incomplete. And these are the stories that we tell about the weather or about an accident or something we've seen or heard in the news or the news of illness or birth or death or divorce. <laughs> and we tell these lengthy narratives where we invoke our perception on what occurred on its potential causes and consequences and all of the things that we presume. Then there is autobiographical accounts. And these are the stories that we tell about who we have been and who we are now and who we aspire to be. And what I have noticed, especially over the last two years for me, where I've had huge life changes one after the other, right? These autobiographical accounts, the, the volume gets turned way up on them when we go through these major life changes because we don't want people, we want to be understood. <laughs> so we don't want people to think that we're making decisions scattered or inconsistent and we want them to understand us and we want it to be purposeful and we, we want it to be portrayed like we are considering all of the things. So this person to person storytelling presents us with a lot of problems as well. And still, I'll leave that dialogue for somebody else that would like to take that on. This series was birthed from my work and my own personal journey towards mindfulness. Um, perhaps the most problematic of the bunch of all of our storytelling abilities are the stories that we tell ourselves. This is the hidden mechanism. Like this is the thing. This is the thing that creates unhappiness, difficulty changing habits, relationship problems, frustration, lack of confidence, anger, and disappointment. And too few are aware of this hidden mechanism, this, these stories that we tell ourselves, even though it's happening every day, all day long. And we're unaware of how much effect it's having on our lives. So it's not the storytelling that's the problem because that's natural and that's something that we do all day, every day. It's the stories that we are telling ourselves and the our lack of awareness surrounding the fact that these stories are shaping our happiness and relationships and mood and lives. Um, for me, a, an example of a story that I told myself and a story that I always would tell myself and then became person to person and then became on and on was that I, I could take it. I was tough. I it was my defense mechanism. It was my main defense mechanism, right? Like I can take it or I don't take, you know, I don't take anybody's shit. Or if you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back or hurt you first. And, you know, nothing bothers me. And, and, you know, all, all of that, that surrounds that, that story. Right. And it stopped working for me because it is not me. And I couldn't keep the story going anymore. So I had to drop that story and drop that defense mechanism, which is really scary because then what is my defense mechanism, right? I'm just like out here in the world having to be myself all the time. <laughs> and like in this scary scenario where 
man, you know, I have to show all of the things and show my very humanness. And when I'm hurt, I have to show that I'm hurt and be hurt. And, and that's scary. That's scary without that story. And it's scary without that defense mechanism. And then within the last couple of weeks during the Redefining Healthy Initiative, one of the biggest points of growth for me has been hearing over and over again, and, and same thing in women's circles, over and over again, like somebody shares their story or a, a story about their stories and it's like, oh my gosh, me too. I thought I was the only one. And it's been beautiful and powerful and this is, sharing these parts of our stories has helped us loosen the story's grip on our lives and helped us change our perspectives and gain insight into ourselves. And we're beginning to see and meet this foundational need to be seen, heard, and felt. And building this level of support and community, instead of just trying to figure it out on our own, like just take, do self-care, go in your room and figure it out for yourself. Um, or looking to the stories, right? Trying to have, trying to create another story to fix it. This level of support and community, we've come together to see and to be seen and to hear and be heard and understand and be understood. And I think that this is all we're really asking for. So over the last couple of weeks, these conversations with women, and then I had a friend that suggested a, a book for me, and she sent me a message on Instagram and suggested this book, and I got it. And you know, I posted in my Instagram story, so she saw that I got the book. And a couple of days later, she sent me a message, and she was like, "Hey, I really wanted to ask you if you had started this book, but here is what I." made up in my head how you'll respond. These are the ways that I think that you're going to respond. Like one, why is she bothering me? Two, doesn't she know that Donna, you know, doesn't she know that I have a, a child and a business? And she told me, right? She told me all of these stories that she had made up. And I was like, this is amazing. This is how I want all of my interactions to be. I want people to to tell the truth and be open about like, here's the story I made up in my head about this. Like, this is the active practice of engaging in our lives with mindfulness. And this is putting the four agreements to work in our real lives, right? Her telling me like, here's what I think that you're going to say when I ask you this meant the world to me. And then I had a friend that she sent me a text and she was like, there, there's a story that she told herself and, and hopefully I'll get around to sharing it one of these weeks, but there's a story that she had worked through and she told me, <laughs> she sent me a text that said, Hey, a story about my story. And I started cracking up. I was like, this is fantastic. A story about our stories. Like this needs to be a series, right? And so we have story time Sunday and, uh, a st stories about our stories. So Every Sunday, I'll be sharing stories about our stories, whether they are my own um, or shared anonymously with me, or hopefully others will join me to share their own stories about their stories. And these are the things that that really have the power to change us, right? Like just just hearing that other people are, are sometimes thinking the same things and sometimes feeling the same things, it makes it a little bit easier because then we're like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. And we can identify our stories and then make these changes. So every Sunday I'll jump on here for Story Time Sunday and start to share some of these things so that we can all continue to build this support in this community. And in the meantime, start to become aware of your stories, good and bad, and notice them throughout the day. Notice when you're getting stuck in the story, right? When you're spinning it around and around in your head and this is like, oh, so-and-so upset me and so-and-so meant this and I think that that's what they were thinking and I think all of these things. When we get hooked on a story, it's hard to break away from it. So becoming aware of being hooked is the most important step. So go at it when you hear these stories and you become aware of them. Just regard it as perception. Remind yourself, this is my perception. This is just how I am perceiving this thing. So don't act on the story, right? Just, just sit with the story and notice how it's making you feel. Notice the physical sensations and just stay with your awareness, right? Coming back to the present 
don't take action, just sit with it and remind yourself, this is my perception. This will take the emotions way down and this will help us just take that pause and start living with a little bit more mindfulness. And this is, this is no simple task. What I'm saying is not simple by any means. It, it sounds, it sounds, I, I guess it is kind of simple, but it's not easy to apply. So it's, it's simple in theory, difficult in application. So it will get easier. And that's why I'm here. And that's why as you hear these stories and you know you aren't the only one, you'll easily be able to identify this, this thing, right? These, this, this hidden mechanism that is, that's holding us back, right? The stories that we're telling ourselves. So I would love to hear some of your stories. And if you have, um, been a participant in retreats, then I'm, then I am sure you have some. And if you have done coaching with me in the past or, or have been following me for a long time, please share your stories. You can send them to me in a message and, and an email, and I will start actively sharing them anonymously if you would like them to be shared anonymously, or I will tell your story through my voice, or I would love to have you even join me in this series and, and share your stories about your stories. This is the powerful work. This is what we are all looking for, right? We are, we are looking for a community and support and to be seen and heard and felt. And I have every intention of, of doing that and creating that space for people. So stay tuned for Storytime Sunday. I will see you all next week.